Hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Jules. I'm a freelance filmmaker working in Montreal, Canada. Today, I'd like to talk about something I've been holding off for a while now, and it's my Carl Zeiss Siena lens kit. So I'm not necessarily new to vintage lenses. When I first got into photography in 2016, 2015, I got into vintage prime lenses so that I could experiment with different focal lengths and different looks on my A6000. But for the past few years, working as a videographer, cinematographer, short film director, I've shot mainly with uh, budget primes and some modern adapted zoom lenses. And I wasn't really considering uh, getting back into the vintage game until I saw this video on YouTube by Blaine Westrup. And he was talking specifically about the uh, Flectagon 20mm f2.8 calls I Sienna lens. And um, there was something about the uh, still lifestyle images that he took of basically an apple, a plant, and a stack of hard drives that made me think, you know what? I think I want to get back into these lenses and I want to go really deep or as deep as time will allow on the Carl Zeiss Siena brand. But not only did I want to try a Yenna lens, I wanted to shoot multiple projects with as close as I could get to a full Yenna kit. And so I hopped into eBay and started looking for Yenna lenses, but more on that later. So my current set consists of the 35mm Flectagon, the 50mm Tessar, and the 80mm Biometar, all f2.8, all Zebra versions. I got all Zebras because since the Yenna factory made lenses for about 40 years, all zebras might help me come close to a matching set or as close to a matching set as possible, knowing that they're photography lenses. And the 35, 50, and 80 work pretty well together. There's definitely need for some color matching when using all of them in tandem, but it's nothing that would break your back in post-production. So I was confident enough in how well the lenses work together and how well they worked with some other lenses in my kit to use them in music video shoots and creative shoots as well. Not having much information about vintage lenses can lead to quite the guessing game. Taking the 35 millimeter, for example, the Flectagon has this incredibly small minimum focus distance of about 18 centimeters, which effectively makes it sort of a macro lens. It makes it a micro lens. I guess it makes it a micro lens, but it has this weird thing where when you focus down below 40 or 50 centimeters the lens stops itself down and you can do that in repetition wherein let's say if you focus down to 20 centimeters and then focus back up to two meters and then focus back down to 20 centimeters it'll stop itself down the first time to f4 and then again to f5.6 and that might be a defect of my copy but i work around it by essentially always making sure that it's wide open at f2.8 before I press the record button, regardless of what I'm shooting. The 50mm Tessar is by far my favorite. Um, between that and 80mm, I use it far more when it comes to close-ups on faces. If I have to frame someone head and shoulders, I'm going to the 50mm. There's something about how it renders faces in terms of like the, the fall-off and the sharpness. The 80mm is pretty good as well. And it also has softer bokeh in comparison to the 35 and the 50, who both have what I might call a ringed bokeh. My current kit consists mainly of standard and short telephoto focal lengths. I know that I will not purchase the 20mm Flectagon, neither the F4 or the F2.8. Since I myself hopped on the Yenna bandwagon, the prices for those lenses has basically skyrocketed, and their popularity as well. The famous Ukrainian rehousing company, Iron Glass Adapters, have themselves begun a rehousing program for the Yenna lenses, and many other people have begun assembling serviced and modded lens kits at ridiculous prices on eBay. You could say we're in the midst of a Yenna craze and this gold rush is gonna keep the prices up on the Yenas for quite a bit of time. Now, are the Zeiss Yenas worth getting in 2024? I think absolutely yes. The Yenas that I've used all have beautiful rendering. Um, if you can get your hands on some decent copies and you're okay with the current prices, and if you're serious enough about the Yenna look, I mean, even considering the rehoused versions or maybe even getting a serviced and modded kit from a trusted source 
I think these lenses are a no-brainer. I myself will continue to use these lenses on as many projects as possible. But if you're really, really tight in the budget and you can't turn back the clock, I would wait out the prices on these lenses until they even out. Thanks for watching this video. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hasta pronto, amigos.